Hey guys, welcome to part two of my three-part series on the Mac Pro Killer build. This is the Mac Pro Killer right here. It's already all set up and I'm already editing on it. So it's working awesome, I'm loving it. So part one, if you guys didn't see that, is me actually talking about all the parts I chose and why I chose those. So if you didn't see that, go ahead and pause this video. There's a link in the description. You guys can click on that and check out uh, part one of this video. And uh, part three is gonna come out really soon is about the actual proof, benchmarks, stuff like that, proving that this computer for costs less than a Mac Pro performs better and is still portable. So you guys subscribe and you can check out that video soon. And I have all the links to all the parts I chose in, in the description. So if you guys are doing research, you want to build your own small computer, you can check out all the parts there. And uh, this is actually my maybe 10, 11th computer build. It's the first one that's actually very small. So it was a little bit of challenge stuffing everything in as you will see. So um, try to be easy on me. Uh, I did do a couple things backwards. I had to pull it out and kind of rearrange some things to get everything to fit, but it all worked out awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and check that out, guys. All right, guys, so starting off, I have my motherboard here. I put it on the box that it came with just to keep all the pins and connections on the backside safe without scratching or just risking anything like that. And uh, you can go ahead and open up the little CPU slot. You got the two bars here on the side and then you can pull that little plastic piece out. Now I'm gonna put the CPU in here first. Uh, it's gonna be fine in there as long as you don't touch it, get any oil on it. Um, I'm gonna try to put together as much as I can outside of the case to make it easier when I'm putting this into the case because it's gonna be so tight. Now you wanna make sure you put it in the right way. There's a little triangle right there and it matches up with the triangle on the motherboard. So you place it in carefully, uh, put down the little levers that uh, hold in your CPU. They seal in just right under the little bars right there. Next, I'm gonna install the memory. Now, this only has the little plastic clips on one side because there's not enough space, but that's fine. Just push it against the back side and apply light, uh, even pressure, and it'll pop right in. Now, you wanna make sure you put it in the correct way. If you look at the bottom of the memory, uh, there's a little indentation. Just match that up to the motherboard and pop those in. It's pretty simple, just like that. Now I'm just gonna take off the side cover here that holds your hard drive. This won't be needed until the very end. Here I went ahead and unscrewed the 120 millimeter fan and got it out of the way. Now the water cooling kit that I purchased and I'm gonna be using comes with two fans of its own that are software controlled. So I'll be putting that in later. Now I'm screwing in the motherboard risers. There's a total of five that are gonna get installed. You can see two in the shot and there's some more below. And there's also two little plastic risers that you just put in the motherboard. Next, I went ahead and installed the power supply. Now, I wasn't quite sure if I should put this in first or wait till later. And I actually opened up the manual that came with the case and they list in there to install it first. So I wanted to give them the benefit of a doubt and I installed it. Now, I didn't have any issues later on. Um, with anything getting in the way and this power supply is actually a little bit longer than your standard power supply But it being modular um, that really helped out later with the cables as you'll see Next I went ahead and installed the IO panel on the back Now these are always annoying when you're doing a build and this was no exception it Took a little bit of playing around to get it in but once I got it in it wasn't going anywhere now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my SATA cables. I wanna do this beforehand because as you'll see in a little bit, it's gonna be a really tight fit. Now I have four cables, I'm putting all of them into the Intel controller and I'm gonna have two for SSDs and two for standard hard drives. Now I'm bending the cables, two over the motherboard and two under the motherboard. I'm doing this because of how tight a fit it is getting this motherboard into the case as you guys will see. Now in certain case, you just wanna take your time um, it's going to fit in there, but just be careful and just set it right on top of the motherboard risers. Now here's a shot showing that the SATA cables actually touch the case. Now there's no pressure on them, so they should be just fine. It's just really tight in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the screws that are going to hold the motherboard down. Now I strongly suggest getting a magnetic screwdriver. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. You don't want the screws to fall down under the motherboard and you have to unscrew it all or even worse, maybe fall into your power supply. So just take it easy and everything's going to work out fine. 
here I have my HD audio cable and it's a simple connection on the left bottom side of the motherboard. Uh, all very easy, just plug it in. This is going to provide your connections for your headphone and mic input on the front of the case. Now while I'm going, I'm going to try to route all the cables as much as I can. It's going to save me from having a ton of cable management to do at the end. Now here's a USB 3.0 connection for your front ports on the case. I'm very happy that the industry switched over to having a single connection instead of a lot of different small connectors. And I'm just going to push these cables out um, towards the edge of the case. Now this motherboard comes with this awesome little uh, riser or extender, I'm not sure what you call it, but it allows you to hook up all your other little connections like your power reset button, your hard drive light up above the case and then it makes it way more simple to just plug that in without having to do those all individually. I'm going to go ahead and install the first hard drive that's mounted to the bottom of the case. Now the way the case comes, you have your rubber mounts already placed in the right position. So just get the longer screws that are made for the hard drive, insert those, line up your hard drive, and you can go ahead and screw your hard drive in. Alright guys, so this is the toughest part of the whole build, is getting this beast of a graphics card in. Now this is a GTX Titan Black Edition, um, I have a video on that guys, go check that out. Now you see this card, it looks like it's not going to fit at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unplug these cables to give me a little bit more room and we'll see if that will help. So uh, I actually did fit this card in when I got the case without having a motherboard or anything else in, but it looks like it's a little bit more difficult now. The card is actually 10 and a half inches, it's the exact length of the case. So I kind of uh, took a gamble on it when I got this case. And you know what, it is going to fit, it's just going to take a little bit of work. So I went ahead and removed all the extra PCI slots because I was having a problem there. And I pulled out my memory modules um, to give me a little bit more room, but that wasn't enough. So what you guys see me doing here is I'm going to pull out my multi-tool, get my pliers out, and I'm going to remove this little uh, front panel on the graphics card. Now this might be uh, kind of scary for some of you guys to do, I kind of wasn't worried about it. It's just these four little uh, screws on the outside of the DVI connections and you have two more screws on the front here and then one on the side. Now what this is going to help me to achieve is um, the little cover right there gets in the way when I'm trying to put the card in. Um, it starts touching the motherboard and I definitely don't want it to scratch anything and it just kind of starts getting stuck. So with it removed, it helps me to not have as much obstacles, I guess, when I'm putting the card in. So I went ahead and put that slot right back in there where it's supposed to go and I'm going to go ahead and attempt to put the graphics card in. Now I'll spare you the time that it took me to carefully put it in, but as you see, it did fit in perfectly. Now all I really have to do is align it with that back panel and uh, screw all those everything I unscrewed back onto the graphics card. Now, if you take a close look, I actually went ahead and I pulled on the case a little bit where those little uh, PCI slot dividers are. What that did is gave me a little bit more room to be able to adjust the card and adjust the little slot and uh, get everything set up properly. So this is totally doable. Um, if you guys don't want to try to attempt to do this, you can kind of look for maybe a bigger case that you can put it into or you can uh, maybe get a smaller graphics card. I know sometimes some manufacturers will make uh, their own version that's not using the reference board that has a different board. Sometimes they're longer, but sometimes you can get them that are shorter, so that's going to help you in that way. But um, since I already ordered this, I wanted to try out all my options and you know what? It worked and it's working perfectly. I'm editing this video right now and the computer runs awesome. So I went ahead and just installed those screws back in and uh, I'm going to put in my little PCI slot covers back in there. Now here is my really sweet Corsair H80i all-in-one water cooling kit that's going to keep this CPU running cool. I'm going to go ahead and partially assemble it, get it ready for installation, and I'm just putting on one fan because the other one's going to mount to the case. And I'm going to go ahead and take off this thermal paste because if you saw part one of this video, um, I bought some aftermarket thermal compound that's going to work better and it should last longer. With the socket 2011, you don't need to connect anything on the back of the motherboard, which makes it a lot more convenient. Just screw those connections in. Now I'm popping in my little screen and I'm gonna go ahead and install 
the other fan onto the case and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the other screws put it from the outside of the case in and that's gonna hold uh, the radiator and everything in now here is the thermal compound I spoke about earlier. There's a couple of different ways of putting it on. Some people will put a pea-sized dot in the center and put their cooler on top. What I did is I grabbed a credit card, just spread it out nice and evenly, and I didn't cover up that little hole on the CPU. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install the water cooling kit. So just easy to do, just align it and um, set up your screws and screw those in. Now just looking at it, it looks totally massive just because of the size of this case, how small it is. It takes up a huge amount of room inside there. And I actually did already go ahead and put the two memory slots that are underneath the water cooler. And it, the water cooler actually sits just really, really close above this memory. So here you see me lining up the water block, very easy to do. And just go ahead and screw in the four screws. And I didn't have to use a screwdriver just because you can feel how tight it is and at a certain point it won't tighten down anymore. Now here I'm plugging in the cables into the back of the modular power supply and once again it's super important if you could spend a little bit more money and get a modular power supply that's going to help you out a ton. I only had to use about half of the cables that came with my power supply and it still looks like a little bit um, too messy inside the case. I can't imagine what it would have been like if I had a regular power supply. And here is the setup of my hard drive with my two SSDs just laying right on top. That's the beauty of SSDs, you don't have to mount them. Get a little bit of double sided sticky tape and they're going to be fine. Now here is that side panel that holds your other hard drive and I already popped in my 3.5 inch 3 terabyte Seagate drive and just grab the long screws that it comes with and you can tighten those down and there's a couple ways you can install this. You can install it this way but it didn't clear because of my big water cooling system so if you flip around it will clear uh, barely but it works out so here's a shot showing it almost set up. Now I'm not going to screw it down just yet. Now here's a little accessory that comes with the case, it's a power supply hanger. I went ahead and installed this just because I'm going to be lugging this case around all the time, but you don't have to put it in if you don't want it. Because this motherboard came out before the 4930K, you need to go ahead and upgrade the BIOS. If you get the 3930K, you don't have to do so. Now you can go ahead and go on Asus's website, they have instructions, and you just put the BIOS on a flash drive, stick it in, and hit the update button. Fairly simple to do as long as you follow all the directions. My copy of Windows 8 was on a disk, so before installing the last hard drive, I plugged in this disk drive and went ahead and installed the Windows 8. Now it's a very basic setup, I'm sure most of you guys have done it before. You plug it in, wait, get some customization options, log in, and there you go, the computer is working awesome. Now here I'm just installing some of the drivers. A lot of times you have to install your LAN or Ethernet driver before you can connect to the internet. And then from that point, you can try to get all the rest of your drivers just off of the internet so you get the freshest ones. Uh, you're not installing some old drivers. If you can't, install the old ones and then update them later. Now that I'm done with the disk drive, I'll go ahead and install my last hard drive. And it's a little bit tight in there. I didn't leave too much slack on the cables, but just enough to be able to plug it in. And everything's set up fine. Here I am just installing the last screws and getting that panel down. Now there are some different ways to set up a RAID. Uh, you can get a dedicated hardware RAID card, which I don't have space for in this computer, or you can use the motherboard and you can do the BIOS or Windows RAID like I did. Now this was my first time setting up a RAID and it worked really, really well and easily and the performance I'm getting is really great. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be saying, why are you using RAID 0? Your hard drive is gonna break and you're gonna lose all your data. Now I have a backup solution already set up this computer is backed up nightly to another computer which has a RAID 5 setup and I am also using a service called Backblaze where everything is backed up online with unlimited storage and it's under four bucks a month and if anything ever happens let's say a fire or somebody comes and steals both of my computers or anything else I have all my files and I lose nothing so if you guys aren't using a service like that um, I strongly recommend it, so you don't want to get to a point where you lose all your files. And if it's that cheap, there's really no reason not to go with it. So in this shot here, you guys can see the 5.45 terabytes of formatted space. Here is the shot of the computer all set up, everything is working awesome. 
Now I'm going to give you guys some shots of the computer. Some parts fit easily, some parts took quite a bit of effort like you guys saw, but everything I bought fit and I think I got lucky because of how tight everything fit in there. You can see the side panel that holds the hard drive is almost touching the water cooling kit but it's not touching and here's the power supply and it's really really close to the water and cooling kit as well and I have the memory right there if you guys can see this was a hard shot to take but the water cooling kit literally sits about two millimeters above the RAM but it does not touch it and here's the graphics card the graphics card does actually touch the case but I haven't had any issues whatsoever and it's running fairly cool as well and here's some shots for you guys me putting the final touch the side panel back on the case and um, once again I just absolutely love this case and this whole setup like you see here um, it's working out great I've been editing videos on it and it's been a blessing for my video editing I've been taking it to work almost daily which was the goal of this build powerful and portable all right guys so I hope you enjoy that video I try to keep it short and simple but it's still kind of long uh, at least it's not like two three hours long um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And um, if you have a comment or question, you can write that below. I'll try to get back to you guys. And if you want to see the proof of this going head to head to the Mac Pro, uh, you guys can subscribe to make sure you guys don't miss that video. And once again, I have all the parts listed in the description. You guys can go and check out those. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in part three of this video. See ya.